Welcome back to Austin Studio. Today we are going to be learning about the woodwind family, which is one of four families that we use to classify musical instruments. The woodwind family is also accompanied by the brass family, the string family, and the percussion family. The percussion family consists of instruments that we hit or strike with our hands, sticks, or mallets, while the string family, they have strings on them, kind of part of the name, and they're used by playing with a bow, with a pick, like guitars, or with your fingers. Now brass and woodwind is where it gets a little fuzzy. Sometimes people don't know whether an instrument is a brass instrument or a woodwind instrument because these two instruments are played by blowing through them. You don't have to blow any air onto a string instrument, you don't need to blow onto a guitar, you don't need to blow onto a drum for percussion family. Those instruments don't need air, although you should breathe while you're playing the instruments. I highly suggest it. But when you're playing a woodwind or brass instrument, you need to be constantly pushing air through the instrument to create the sound. And the way that we can decide and decipher whether an instrument is woodwind versus brass is by taking five key elements and thinking, does this instrument meet the criteria of those five? The first is the mouthpiece. Now, brass mouthpieces are all pretty much the same. However, woodwind mouthpieces, they vary a little bit. Some mouthpieces, like the piccolo and the flute, have a face plate, on, face plate on it, excuse me. But when you play it, there's a hole right here, and you make a face that looks like you're saying ew and ooh at the same time. So you go ew. When you take that and blow over the face plate, you get a sound. When you put it on the whole instrument, you're able to create more sounds. On the clarinet and saxophone, you have a mouthpiece that has what the second element is, reeds. Saxophone and clarinet have a single reed, which is kind of a, it's called a piece of cane, and think of the wood chips you find on a playground, but not as dirty or as thick. They're very thin, and although I don't have a reed, I just broke my last reed, it would look sort of like this small piece of wood right here, and it goes on the mouthpiece, and it's held in by a little metal bracket called ligature, and on the mouthpiece, when you put it in and you blow on this, between the piece of wood and the mouthpiece, they will go and vibrate together as you're blowing through it and putting the pressure from your mouth, and it'll create a buzzing sound. When amplified in the instrument and certain keys are held down, you will get different notes. Lastly, we have the oboe and bassoon, which also use reeds, but unlike that instrument, like the clarinet and saxophone, they don't use a mouthpiece that the reed vibrates with. They have what's called a double reed. And it's two reeds together, and when you play it, if I can get the right sound, you should have a crowing, buzzing sound. You make a couple different sounds in there, and you need slightly different ones for which instrument you are playing, the oboe or the bassoon. Again, when put into the instrument, it will amplify and make a different sound when holding down the right keys. So, we've got mouthpiece, we've got reeds, now we should talk about the shape of the instrument. All woodwind instruments have a long slender shape to it. Think of the flute. When you see the flute, the flute is basically a line. Think about when you were in kindergarten and someone said, draw a musical instrument. How many of you drew a flute because all you had to draw was a line straight across? Not too difficult right there. Same with the clarinet. These instruments are long. Just a straight line straight through. While brass instruments, they're usually wound up and curly. They coil in different directions. We'll learn more about them in the brass video. Now, there are two exceptions, being the bassoon, which we'll see later. It has a few curls on it, and so does the saxophone. But generally speaking, it is a long, slender, straight instrument. We have our mouthpiece, our reed, our shape. Let's talk about the keys and holes. Now, on a flute, we have keys all up and down here. And these keys with the little pads underneath them are above multiple holes. If you could see underneath each of these, there is a hole under each one. Unlike brass instruments, which have valves on them, we have to actually cover each of the holes to make the right sound. Think about boom whackers. We've used these in class before. The smaller the boom whacker, the higher the pitch. The lower the pitch, it's because it's a longer boom whacker. The more distance that the air has to travel through, the lower the note is going to be. So when you're covering all of the holes on the instrument, 
you're going to have a low note versus a high note. Now this is simply one part of the clarinet, and you can see there are keys on it, and there are also holes that your fingers just flat out cover by themselves without a key being there. Sometimes you might cover half of a hole in advanced technique or certain notes that you are trying to reach. We've got our mouthpiece, our reeds, our shape, and we know that they have keys and holes on them, unlike the other instruments that we blow through. Lastly, we're going to talk about the materials that they are made of. Brass instruments are usually made of brass or metal, while woodwind instruments can be made of almost anything. You would expect that these instruments are made from wood, and traditionally, and originally, they were made of wood. However, the clarinet I just showed you is made of plastic, and the flute nowadays is made from metal. They can come in a variety of different materials, but you can remember that because brass instruments are only made in metal, except for a few tiny exceptions we'll talk about in our brass instructional video. So, let's go through and take a listen to a couple of these different instruments that are being played, and I'll give you a little background about them, and we can identify how they are woodwind instruments. Firstly, let's start with the flute. Now, the person you're listening to on screen right now is a fantastic flautist, or flutist, depending on which way you say it, who performs a lot of pop music on YouTube. Her name is Melissa Flutes, and she's going to play for you Havana by Camilo Cabello, while I talk a little bit about this instrument, and we can kind of hear what it sounds like. So, flutes are a family of musical instruments in the woodwind group that come in various sizes. Unlike woodwind instruments, with reeds, a flute is what's called an aerophone, or a reedless woodwind instrument. We talked about it on mine right here. It produces its sound from air flow that goes across the instrument, right over the opening. Take a look at Melissa playing it. She's got that tight, almost like you're blowing through a straw face, and she's blowing her air directly across the instrument while she holds it. No reeds, just a lip plate for the mouthpiece. It is long and straight, and her fingers are covering all the keys and holes. She sounds a lot better than me. I'll let you listen for a moment. When you play an instrument, you might be just learning an instrument now and you might not move as much as this professional does, but music is an expressive art form. So a lot of times when you watch professionals play their instrument, they are often moving and flowing with it, especially with an instrument that you are really using a lot of your body in. All of your air comes up from your diaphragm out through you. And you have to control how fast the air is, how cold or warm the air is and how much air you are going to push through it. Let's take a look at another instrument. The next instrument I want to look at is the piccolo. Now, I, although I don't have one right here, let's give a check out to the West Point Band playing Stars and Stripes Forever by Philip Sousa. You should be familiar with this march. You've probably heard it somewhere before. So, the piccolo, which is Italian for small, is just a half-sized flute. It's shrunk up. a lot smaller than the actual flute. Now, this half-size flute is a member of the woodwind family, and much like the flute, it plays over a lip plate. It is long and straight, and you are covering it with your fingers on the holes and keys, but it is very, very high pitch. Remember what I said about boom whackers earlier and the size of an instrument? The smaller it is, the higher the pitch it's going to have. Moving on, I would like to show us the oboe. The oboe is the first of the next four instruments that we're going to have that you don't play by going over a lit plate. Rather, it is one of the double reed family members. Remember, this double reed is two reeds that has a small opening here, and when you go over it, that sound sounds kind of bad, but it's kind of the sound you actually want. It sounds crazy. When you put it in the instrument, it amplifies and makes all the rich tones of the instrument actually come out. Now let's take a listen to this oboe here, and it's a song you've probably heard of before. 
The oboe is the principal instrument of the oboe family. There are other instruments within the oboe family, such as the English horn, but we're going to talk about just the oboe for now. They are usually made of wood with metal keys, and they have a cone-shaped bore. The bore, if you notice at the very bottom here, there's a small sort of, it gets wider. That's the bore of the instrument. It's got that flared bell. That's the bell right there, but the bore is the inside that goes up through that bell, just to make sure that was clear. The bell is the end, the bore is the inside, and it, how it comes down hollow on the inside. Kind of like if you look through a flute and you saw through it, except there's a cap on the end, so you can't do that. To play the oboe, you blow through this double reed and cover it just kind of like the flute. There are a lot of open keys, sort of like the clarinet, which we'll get to later. It's crazy how this classical instrument fits the melody and the mood and feel of Despacito. I don't think that's what Louis Fonzi was going for, however, it works really well. I should mention to you that this oboist's name is Tom's Abellis, and like all of the other instrumentalists, his links will be posted in the bottom of this video if you want to check out more stuff that he does, or any of these instrumentalists do. Now I want to go on and move to our next instrument from the double reed family, which is the bassoon. Think of the oboe, but a lot bigger. You can already see on the screen right now that these instruments are big. They go almost as tall, I'll put it this way, they're taller than most middle schoolers that are watching this right now, and high schoolers, some of them are reaching up to the height of it, but it's a tall instrument that instead of playing it with a mouthpiece on the top or at the end of it, like all other woodwind instruments, this has a small neck that comes off of it, this small metal board that comes off of it in the neck that you put the bassoon reed on, which is what kind of reed this is right here. These are actually bassoon reeds. And you put this on the end of it, and when you buzz through it, it goes down into the instrument. And depending on what keys you are playing, it changes the, the pitch for each note that you are playing. This is Mirrors by Justin Timberlake. Pretty cool. Got some drums going on. Kick drum, clap. We got the wooden brushes on the cement wall, brick wall. Now this is what you would call a quartet. Four people that are playing together. Yes, there are seven, but it is a bassoon quartet. Four bassoons playing each part. In comparison to the oboe, you can hear how much darker, warmer, and lower of a sound it has. You could think of the oboe as like a high tenor voice while the bassoon has this more baritone to bass voice. Traditionally, this instrument is not played standing up either. You sit and hold it off to your side, as you can see them all standing it with their side, but you can get a strap to hold the instrument up, just like most woodwind instruments, other than the flute or piccolo, because again, those instruments, they don't need a strap since you're holding them sideways. I'm gonna have this song stuck in my head all day. Now, we are gonna watch a video on it, but it's important to point out that there is another instrument of the bassoon family called the contrabassoon. Think of it as this instrument, but bigger and beefier, with a lot deeper and lower sound. It can go up to an octave below that, and it sounds incredible. But I couldn't find some good videos for it, but I'll try to upload a couple in the link below. All right, let's try taking a look at the clarinet. Clarinet is the last type of instrument that we are going to go over in our woodwind instruments. The clarinet and saxophone both play on a single reed on an actual mouthpiece like this where the metal or sometimes leather even uh, ligature holds the reed tight in there. And again, I'm sorry, I do not have a reed to show you what that looks like. Now, you've definitely heard this tune before played on the clarinet. Uh, let's take a listen. The last group we listened to was The Windbreakers playing Mirrors by Justin Timberlake, while this one is Dance Monkey by The Tones and I, played by George, who is in Pure Music YouTube channel. This song has become so popular lately.
You're probably hearing two of them right now if you listen carefully enough. He recorded himself playing twice. Once lower and once in that higher register where he's kind of growling the notes, which isn't traditional for clarinet playing. But when you're doing a poppy, jazzy sound, you kind of toy with it to get some extended sounds. So the clarinet is a single reed mouthpiece straight cylinder shaped tube with a flared bell at the end, kind of like the uh, oboe head, but not double reed, single reed. Clarinet bodies are usually made from wood, plastic, even hard rubber or metal or even ivory. They can come in a variety of different shapes, sizes, and different ranges from the traditional clarinet you're looking at now to a bass clarinet, an alto clarinet, a soprano clarinet. They're all different shapes and sizes and make different registers and pitches and sounds. The tone even changes, especially when you change the instrument material. A plastic clarinet versus a metal clarinet versus a wood are all going to sound completely different. I wonder how the ducks are liking this. All right, let's check out our last instrument, which is the saxophone family. Now this group right here, I cannot pronounce their full name. However, they often go on YouTube as Smith, S period, M-I-T-H, Smith, and they are a saxophone quartet. Now, they just finished playing a classical gig on the streets that it seems people weren't interested in. I would have been interested in it. And as they're packing up, they start to realize that they're making sound effects that work for a pop song. I'm going to hold off one moment before playing it and talking about the instrument a little more because I want to point out the four different saxophones here. You look on the very far set end over here on our left side, we have a soprano saxophone. This one looks a lot like a clarinet and it's gold. Now, the instruments aren't made from actual gold. This is where people don't know where this instrument lies. It is a woodwind instrument, but everyone thinks it's a brass instrument because it can be made of brass. It can be made of different types of metal. And my own personal saxophone, which is at school right now, is brass, but it's got a black lacquer on it, so it doesn't even look gold or brass at all. But this is a woodwind family because using that soprano saxophone, look at it. It's long and straight, with keys, a mouthpiece, a single reed, and it's made of a material that works in the woodwind family. Looking next to it, we see the tenor saxophone, but I want to jump from soprano to this end. We've got the alto. Think of voices in a chorus. The highest singer is a soprano, like the soprano saxophone. The lowest singer, or of the female voices typically, is an alto, and that would be the alto saxophone. So it's a little lower than the soprano saxophone. It has one bend in it. Then we've got the tenor saxophone next to our soprano, and that is like the higher voice of a male singer. So it's going to be lower than both the typically feminine voices for soprano and alto. It's going to be the tenor voice, which is lower than that, and you can see that it's a little bit bigger than the alto saxophone. Lastly, we have the baritone saxophone, which would be even lower than a tenor voice would be, just like in a chorus. Now, in a chorus, you might also have basses, and there is a bass saxophone and a contrabass. There's also above the soprano, there's the sopranino and the soprillo. There's a wide variety, not nearly as wide as the clarinet family. If I showed you all of them, we'd be here all day. But in a typical quartet, you've got soprano, alto, tenor, and baritone, kind of like a quartet of singers. Let's take a listen to them playing while I tell you a little more. I still don't know why the people didn't want to hear the classical music. I love classical. Typically, I like jazz saxophone quartets the most though. Hashtag video editing, because this is not how it works in real life. All right, they're changing it up. You can hear how deep and bassy that sound is on the bass saxophone played by the guy in the colorful shirt. And you can almost hear the tenor digging in there with the white polka dot shirt. Then you've got the soprano being played by the guy with the black with the white designs and the alto being played by the guy who's got the camouflage shirt. Now, the saxophone, also referred to as the sax for short, is a family of woodwind instruments. There is the saxophone, but there are many types of saxophones, as we've talked about. They're usually made of brass, and they're played with a single reed mouthpiece similar to that of the clarinet. 
The saxophone family was invented by Belgian instrument maker Adolf Sax in 1840. The sax wanted to create a group of series of instruments that would be the most powerful and vocal of the woodwinds, and the most adaptive of the brass instruments that would fill the vacant middle ground between the two sections. Think about how most woodwind instruments have that lighter, airier sound, while the brass have that big fanfare sound. This kind of helped meet right in the middle. All right, well, I hope you learned a lot about instrument families, and specifically the woodwind instrument family and the six instruments that we covered in this family today. I can't wait for you to join us next time for the brass instruments, and I'll see you next time. Until then, musically speaking, it's Mr. A. Catch you later.